Hello and welcome to how to create menus in DVD Architect. This follows on from the last one I've done, which uh, should be in the list here somewhere. Now first we'll need to start up DVD Architect, obviously. And we double click and we'll notice we've got 5.2 on this one. It'll work on 4 and 3 from what I remember. Now what I'm going to show you is the easiest way, as far as I've, the way I've done it basically, over the years. Um, so you don't have to use any of the menus and stuff. It's all basically drag and drop. This is how the page opens up with menu 1 and the blue background, which has been there since the early versions. Now to get a, a clip on there that's menu based, we navigate to a folder where our clip is, our MPEG. And the ones that uh, I've got in this folder were rendered on DVD, sorry, rendered on Sony Vegas, and they were rendered in the correct format so that they won't require re-rendering when I make the DVD. So we just left click and bring it over, drop it on, and basically that's a menu now on the screen. So we'll get another one, and we'll drag that across as well. And there's two menus on there, and if we look at the preview we can see there they are, the click on one that will play. Now, we need to obviously make it look a little bit tidier than that. So what we'll do is we we'll first we'll line them up, we'll grab them both, go to the left here, uh, align top and bottom and align center. The other thing we'll also do is when we're in preview, if you notice this one's yellow, and we'll move to the other one, that becomes yellow. Is we'll make them underlined. So we highlight them both. Come over to button properties, go to highlight, go down to style and select underline. Click outside and now we go to preview. You see that we've got two bar two bar a bar that underlines the menu that's now active. Close to go back. Now if you want to change the colour, that's not a problem, just go to the colour set and you can see the colours are there and you can adjust those colours uh, as you wish. The other thing uh, that you want to tidy up is the first image that you see perhaps on this one, which is the main one. So in this case we'll go to media in the button properties, go down to we see start time where all the noughts are, click on the button on the right and then use the the slider to go across to an image that we like and then leave it. We can put the time directly in and we could get that from Sony Vegas on the timeline and just put that number in and that frame will come up. Click outside again, click on the next one, uh, again we'll do a pull down and we'll slide across and there we've now got two images that we think look better than the black and the white. What would be nice now is if we could do the text underneath and we need to change our, our little uh, cursor from what it is to a sizing tool which you'll find near the top there. Click on that, come down, highlight the text, press F2 and just type in our new text. Now we can change the size of that text and the font down here and it's on auto which means that whatever size that box is the text will fill it. So I'll do control Z to go back. You can if you wish manually set it. So we'll click the other one now and press F2 again and we'll type in a name for that. There we go and we'll do the same for menu 1 Uh, oh, I don't know why I've done that. Let's do that again. There we go. Click outside. We can drag the ends in. Obviously, now trying to get in the middle. It will be tricky, but not a problem. Come back up here. Click to selection tool. And then just select to horizontal centering. There we go. That basically is how you produce a menu DVD in DVD Architect. We go to preview. We can now see it, we can click on it, go back to the menu, click another one. And each time those DVDs, so those clips come to an end, they come back to this menu. Now, if for some reason we didn't get sound on those, we just double click, and we, sh we have sound on these obviously, so we can see the sound on this track, on the audio track. If that wasn't there, 
And the only reason that will be there is that the video and the audio are named exactly the same, apart from the last three digits. Then we go back into our folder, find the music, uh, the audio track, and then drag that across. Now the reason I say that is something because I do mine as two separate encodes, one for the video as MPEG-2, and the audio is AC-3. And I do those separately. And the reason I do it separately is that it saves space, which means you can get more data on the disk. So back over here to our video, and it comes back to memory. If you notice on our video, there's this little sort of purple, little white triangle, sorry, star, with a purple background. That means that this video uh, will play first, this menu, sorry. So when you put the DVD in, this is the first thing that comes up. Now, just for arguments, I'm going to get their credits. So what I'll do is I'll drag the end credits over to the top there, so it's above our video, as you can see, and it's there. And the reason for that is I'm going to try, if you highlight it, click on that set disk start. Now when you start the DVD, the first thing they will see is the credits. We can check by going to, to the preview button. Using the drop down box, we'll preview disk. Go. go next, and then it should at the end there come back to the menu. Close. So, by setting that, you can select first play. So, it could be a logo or something that you want to play before it comes into the main DVD. So, we'll undo that because we're quite happy with that bit. Now, if you want to change the background image, there's a few ways to do that. You can come down to the Nice selection down here where it says backgrounds. Navigate to one that you like or one that's appropriate. So this one here, double click it and the background changes. If you want to change the whole theme of the DVD, so it's more in line with that particular image, then you can double click the theme button. And as you can see, the buttons have changed and the background has changed. What I'll do is I'll undo that and that, highlight just one item, and then under buttons, we can double click a button and the button will change. And then we can use grouping to do everything at once. Now to change the background image to one of our own images, and this works for images, is just to drag it across and drop it in. Bear in mind though that the image will resize in the back and so it may look odd if you've got a photograph. We'll undo that. If you just want to put an image in which is in the background, then right click, drop it in. Oops, sorry. So this is on an asteroid, so there's a loss, there we go. And insert as a graphic. So you can just insert an image. If you want to insert moving video in the background, then use in the recap, you right click it, insert left click it, drop it in and set background, uh, video and audio. There we go. And again, if we don't want to start on the white screen, we can use this green flag here and pull it out to the image that we want to be on. We we'll leave it on the wire, we'll do a preview and we can see what happens. So that's basically how to put menus on, change backgrounds, and one of the other two fancy bits on DVD Architect. Thank you.